Jean Carles Puigdemont as president of a council of the Catalan Republic on February 18th in Brussels and as Catalan president in Parliament the following week. These are his candidacy's plans. Hello and welcome to Catalan News. The Catalan pro-independence parties are still working out how to swear Puigdemont in as Catalan president. They are considering amending a law to make that happen and Puigdemont's candidacy is also planning on holding two investitures one in Belgium and another in Catalonia. This was leaked today, but the other forces for a Catalan state haven't greenlighted it just yet. Today, we'll get you the latest on this topic and we'll also visit an event held in support of the pro-independence leaders in jail and in Brussels. Catalonia will have a new president by the end of the month. This if Puigdemont's candidacy's plans come true, which is a big if. One of its officials said today that an agreement to swear in a new leader for the country will be announced tomorrow. But the also pro-independence Esquerra party said negotiations will take a bit longer. Puigdemont's plans to be reinstated became public after a leak. Yet another one. It's been a week since some of Carlos Puigdemont's private messages were leaked to the press. His intercepted remarks were rather gloomy and it looked as if he was ready to give up. Yet it seems he's not. A leaked internal coup party document today unveiled a new proposal from Puigdemont's candidacy. It suggests swearing him in as president of an entity called the Council of the Catalan Republic on February the 18th in Brussels. The aim would be to provide continuity to his deposed government and the declaration of independence that led to his dismissal. At the same time, his candidacy plans to swear him in as president the following week with a vote in the Catalan Parliament, even though he will be in Belgium. The idea being considered is to amend the law to enable an investiture at a distance. An official for his Junts per Catalunya party said today that an agreement between the pro-independence parties could be reached tomorrow. Yet Ally Esquerra is more cautious about both the formula and the date, and the left-wing pro-independence party avoided commenting on the new proposal. A nosaltres ens sembla positiu que hi hagi sobre la taula propostes i per tant això ens sembla un avenç molt important, les estudiarem una per una i segur que trobarem la millor possible. Meanwhile, the third party in the bloc, Coop, opened the door to swearing in an alternative candidate to Puigdemont if necessary, and it might well be needed should Spain fiercely oppose the final formula. So far, Madrid rules out the possibility of a legal amendment to enable a remote investiture. Qualsevol pas que es doni per intentar saltar-se la legalitat i situar-se a fora d'aquest àmbit democràtic que defensem, doncs tindrà evidentment una resposta immediata per part del govern espanyol, és evident. The Unionist Ciutadans Party also rejects the plans. Its leader in Catalonia said that Puigdemont can go to Europe at Disney if he wants to be called president, but in the real world he can only take office in the Catalan Parliament. Many think that Rajoy's plans are aimed to make sure that there's no chance of pro-independence officials being pardoned if or when sentenced. Four of them are still in pretrial prison, and today an event to support them was held at a Barcelona public university. Around 10 relatives of officials either behind bars, freed on bond, or in Belgium took part, making it clear just how difficult this situation is for them. They're raising funds in order to pay for the unexpected expenses of traveling to visit them or paying for lawyers. Loved ones and relatives gathered in Barcelona today to show their support for the jailed Catalan leaders and the former government members in Brussels. All in all, 15 families are affected, having to spend large sums of money to either travel 700 kilometers in order to visit family in prison or flying all the way to Belgium. In fact, an association was set up last November in order to raise funds for them and make life a little easier. At the event, they spoke about this association as well as their own personal experience. Aleshores agafes força, tires endavant, moltes incògnites, moltes incerteses i aprens a viure amb això, vull dir, és una incertesa constant. Other related issues hit the courts today as well, linked to Catalonia's push for independence one way or another. One such case was that of a clown and counsellor who took a photo of himself alongside a Spanish police officer on September 20th. It was an act of protest against police raids on Catalan government and grassroots organisation buildings, but it didn't go down well with the Spanish police. Four months later, long after the photo had already gone viral, Jordi Pesaradona was summoned to court. Bé, m'he agafat el dret a no declarar. La jutgessa només hi veu el delicte de desobediència, per tant, pensem que és una bona notícia. La història és no única. A mechanic was also summoned to court. The reason why, he refused to repair a Spanish police car. 
Li vaig explicar que sentint-ho molt que no... Des del dia 1 d'octubre ja no els repararia el cotxe pels fets que van passar per les càrregues policials. Jordi Pereo és ara sota investigació per incitament a hatred. Tot això és en l'aftermà de la Corte Constitucional Corte de l'Espanya 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 de l'Espanya. Jordi Sanchez was kept behind bars yesterday after more than three months there. What reason did the judge give? He could reoffend because he hasn't given up his pro-independence ideology. This isn't the first time that NGO Amnesty International has had their say about the situation in Catalonia. And in fact, this week, they commented on the imprisonment itself. The NGO spoke up about the judge's decision and urged the Spanish authorities to release Sanchez. They say that his prolonged imprisonment is excessive and disproportionate. What's more, Amnesty's head in Europe said the protests held in Barcelona on September 20th last year cannot constitute the crime of sedition, of which Sanchez and grassroots leader Jordi Cuchar are being accused of. Being charged with sedition might carry a number of years in jail. Let's take a look at economy now. Today, we learned about the earning results of some big firms in Catalonia for the last year. The infrastructure company Avertis that manages toll highways in the country announced profits of around 900 million euros last year. This means around 13% more than in 2016. The firm moved its legal headquarters out of Catalonia in late 2017 amid the political turmoil, and its general director said it's still too early to consider going back. The Gas Natural Energy Company also announced positive results today. It closed 2017 with an increase of 1.3 billion euros. The firm also moved its seat out of the country last autumn. There's been a cold snap sweeping through Catalonia. We've even seen snow. The dropping temperatures have been especially noticeable up north, where helping the homeless is as urgent as ever. Back in December, the northern town of Girona implemented programs to aid those in need, and now it's opened a new shelter that offers a warm bed, no questions asked. In the northern Catalan town of Girona, the temperature at night has been below zero, and in order to keep its homeless population sheltered from the cold, the town hall opened a new center. It's called Sarrainas, and by nightfall there is already a line out the door. Inside, those in need are provided with blankets, pillows, sheets, and a bed to sleep on. Then they are offered hot coffee and biscuits. The lights go out at 11 p.m., although many have already been asleep for hours. There are over 11,000 people on the street in Catalonia, with over 3,000 in Barcelona. In Girona, the number is estimated as being as high as 125. Since the Reinas opened in January, all the beds have been full, and everyone, including the volunteers, recognize the importance of this service. He hecho una cosa muy importante y que Girona, de verdad, no es gente, por ejemplo, esto cualquiera, tiene un buen corazón, pensar además, eso es importante. On est là, pour aider les gens, comme volontaire. Donc, ici c'est très, c'est très important. Sarrainas asks no questions. Differently from other shelters, applicants don't need to accept monitoring or provide information to be taken in. They can even remain anonymous if they prefer. One of those who didn't mind giving his name was Adele. Born in Morocco, he's lived in Girona for 15 years and he's been on the street for a long time. Before Sarrainas, he stayed in an abandoned warehouse. He much preferred here since he can sometimes stay as late as 8 a.m. There is one regulation that's enforced in the shelter, though. Respect. A sign on the wall reads, We respect you, respect us, we value you, value us, we respect each other, we all win. We end our show today by showing you some images of a museum in the county of La Garrocha in northern Catalonia. It's showing a collection of Japanese pottery, the most important in both Catalonia and Spain. Enjoy this moment of art and music, and see you tomorrow.